This is Midnight Sun. First of all, and before anything else, of course, I have to apologize. Apologies for having been absent for so many months uh, without broadcasting a single Midnight Sun episode. My apologies. But I think you will understand. As you know, this program is designed to try to transform our society and try to mitigate the climate and extension crisis that we are facing. And as you know, from this program we have been trying to launch a new campaign, a new social movement called Rainbow Warriors 3.5. And anyway, so a few days after the last program, we launched this campaign and it is taking up a lot of our time. Not only this, we are also involved in other activities, other initiatives, all of them to try to mitigate the climate and extinction crisis. And all of this, of course, we do in a completely altruistic way. We don't get enough income to make a living. So when we suddenly get a job from which we can earn some income, we have to find the time. We have to find the time wherever we can. And since February, income earning jobs and a couple of long trips that we couldn't leave aside also started to come in. In short, it all came together. In other words, we can't afford to cover all the fronts. And that is why we haven't been broadcasting this program since the 26th of February. But above all, I have to apologize, especially to our patrons, to the people who have been doing their bit on Patreon so that we could make this program. I have to apologize because you are making a small personal sacrifice in the form of a financial contribution to make this work. In light of the situation, I would say to you, please feel free to stop making that financial contribution. Feel completely free and cancel your sponsorship will understand it. But despite my apologies, I would also like to take this opportunity to warn that from now on, I do not know to what extent we will be able to broadcast a program like this every two weeks in two languages. The Rainbow Warriors 3.5 campaign is taking a lot, a lot of work, a lot of time and we need a lot of help. That is why we invite you to be part of this campaign. Maybe that will give us a little more time. The more people who can join this initiative, the easier it will be for us to cover all the fronts. In any case, we will continue to work here in the same general endeavor to try to mitigate the social and ecological crisis that we are facing, whether through these radio programs, this podcast, or on other fronts. But we will continue to work on the same issue. In fact, Marta Ventura and I work 8 to 10 hours a day, every day of the week, 
Of that time, around 20% is dedicated to covering survival needs, while the rest, 80% of our time, is dedicated to trying to mitigate the climate and extinction crisis on various, on various fronts, to try to build a more socially and ecologically just society. Well, apologies having been made, today we will talk about the importance of narrative in the construction of reality. How important narrative is in building an alternative future. This is what we are going to talk about today. And let's start with a quote from Jean-Paul Sartre the 20th century philosopher, novelist, playwright and political activist. Sartre won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1964 and was the partner of the philosopher Simone de Beauvoir. And there is a quote from him that we wanted to, to share. A quote that says, A man is always a teller of stories. He lives surrounded by his own stories and those of other people. He sees everything that happens to him in terms of these stories, and he tries to live his life as if he were recounting it. This is what today's program is all about. If you think that this program does not concern you, you might be wrong. It is quite possible that this program will change your life, and that is important. Midnight Sun, directed by Grain Kutanda. So welcome to Midnight Sun. Welcome, whatever your race, whatever your ideas, your beliefs, whatever your social background, your economic situation, whatever your job, whatever your life, feel at home in our program. And join this tribe of all colors, which is Rainbow Warriors 3.5, which is the campaign, the movement that we are launching through Midnight Sun. Let's start with the two fairly recent news items. One of them is from last February, and its headline said that 69% of the world's population is willing to contribute 1% of their income to fight climate change. This figure comes from research carried out by the universities of Bonn and Copenhagen published in the journal Nature Climate Change and comes from a survey of almost 130,000 people in 125 countries, which is a very large sample indeed. The authors of this research say, and I quote, 69% of the global population expresses a willingness to contribute 1% of their personal income 86% endorse pro-climate social norms and 89% demand, demand intensified political action. This would indicate that humanity seems to have finally realized that we are facing a serious problem with the climate and extension crisis. And another report that came out recently, exactly on 20th June, says that 80% of the world's population wants their governments to take stronger action on the climate crisis. This second research was carried out by Oxford University and the United Nations Development Programme and surveyed 
more than 73,000 people from 77 countries speaking 87 different languages. That is to say, between one research and the other, we are adding up to more than 200,000 people, which is a sufficiently large sample to take these conclusions as valid. In the first news item, the figure was 89%, while in this one, the figure rises to 80%. In other words, around 8, 9 people out of 10 people are saying that their governments need to take a stronger and more urgent action on climate change. A few years ago, we, climate activists, were desperate because we were trying to wake up our societies, trying to make the population see that we were facing a serious problem. And now we are finally seeing that the population is reacting, is becoming aware. Why has this happened? I think one of the main causes is that uh, people have already started to see climate change. They are seeing it. They are seeing it in the news, and some people are already experiencing it in their lives, or have already experienced it. And on the other hand, maybe it is that, finally, the media is talking about, is talking about it. Because four, five or six years ago, even in 2013, when we organized the People's Climate March in Edinburgh, in Scotland, the media was not, doing, was not doing their job. They were not telling the population what was happening. Now, at last, they are reporting the seriousness of the situation. But people are also beginning to suffer the consequences. The problem now is also in another area, because from science and from all areas, from the world of activism, in order to generate interest in the media and in society, we have been insisting that we were heading towards a collapse. The narrative of collapse has been very necessary we have had to say that yes, there is a high probability of collapse for our civilization because of the climate and extinction crisis. The thing is that it is possible that now, perhaps, we have to change this narrative. The collapse narrative has been very useful. It, has, it, it, it was a very necessary warning because the danger is there. The collapse is possible, but, may, but maybe now we have to ask ourselves whether we have to keep telling ourselves this narrative of collapse. That would be the question. Should we insist on this narrative? Because narratives construct reality. That is what we are going to talk about in today's program. Midnight Sun is a radio program that seeks to foster the process of social transformation needed to address the social, climate and extinction emergency we are now entering. Our goal that you put your talents at the service of the Earth and the terrestrial community of life. Join the tribe at the Midnight Sun, the social media hub of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 Global Campaign. As hard as the times ahead may be, at Midnight Sun we will keep believing that we can still build an alternative future. Our secret radical hope, however unreal it may seem. 
Join the tribe of Mimnai Sun. As I was saying, the dominant narrative in this crisis has been the narrative of collapse. The narrative that we, in the scientific community and in the world of activism, have been using to try to wake up society and, above all, the media. It was necessary. We had to tell the truth that things are very bad and we must continue to say that the situation is very serious and that there is certainly a very high possibility of the collapse of our civilization. In fact, there is a scientific paper from 2016 published by the Journal of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States where eight years ago it was already said that there was a 1 in 20 chance of extinction of the human species. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the United Nations was saying a few years ago that 150 species were becoming extinct every day. The situation is very serious and this narrative of collapse has certainly not appeared in the last few years. It began to emerge as early as 1972, specifically with research by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, at the request of the Club, uh, the club of Rome, work carried out by Donella Meadows, one of the foremost specialists in system dynamics. This work was published in a book entitled The Limits to Growth, which had a great impact and in that work it was already stated that we risked a possible collapse of our civilization between 2035 and 2050. That is to say, this has been warned about for a long time. What has been happening is that markets, big corporations, banks, global economic power have been trying to cover it up or hide it in order to maintain their profits, to maintain the power structures from which they benefit. And governments have been playing along with them because, in a way, it is the economic power that also sets its guidelines to the political power. But now we seem to have woken up. So, is the narrative of collapse still necessary? Because once we have woken up, once humanity has become aware of the enormous risk posed by the climate and extinction crisis, perhaps we need to rethink the narrative. You may be wondering, to what extent is narrative important? It is very important. In episode number 5 of this program, Midnight Sun, we already discussed the research of a Harvard University psychologist, Jerome Brunner, who had also been a professor at Oxford University. Brunner said that, that traditionally, thought has been understood as an instrument of reason. This leading many to conclude that thought should be governed by the laws of logic and induction. However, Brunner argues that logical thinking is not the only type of thinking we use, nor is it even the most prevalent, and he justifies the existence of another type of thinking different from sheer reasoning, namely metaphorical analogical thinking, the kind of thinking involved in the construction of stories and narratives. For Brunner, narrative offers us a version of reality 
whose acceptability is determined by the logic of verifiability, but by convention and narrative necessity. That is, that any story makes sense in its plot and outcome. From this point of view, narrative would operate as an instrument of the mind for the construction of reality, for organizing human experience. In fact, Brunner said, narrative truth, between quotation marks, is judged by its verosimilitude rather than its verifiability. There seems indeed to be some sense in which narrative, rather than referring to reality, between quotation marks, may in fact create or constitute it, as when fiction creates a world of its own. In short, Brunner's central premise is that the main function of the mind is world-making, that is, to create the world. Later, in 2004, Brunner asked whether our own autobiography, the narrative we tell ourselves about our own lives, should not be seen as a series of life-making procedures, procedures by which we construct our own life. In fact, Brunner goes even further by saying that ultimately, we become what we tell ourselves in our narrative, in that narrative through which we tell ourselves our own life. According to leading social science research, we need 3.5% of the world's population to put their talents into action if we are to mitigate the effects of the climate and extinction emergency we are facing. And that is the aim of this radio space. Midnight Sun is the communication hub of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 global campaign. If this is so, if Brunner is right, and it seems that he is right, because as far as I know, no other scientist has contested his theories. If you look, even in, in politics, at the national and international level, politicians use narratives to construct socially, in public opinion, in the minds of citizens, the realities that suit them best. This is how we construct social realities. If this is so, I ask again, to what extent will it be appropriate to continue to use the narrative of collapse? Won't this narrative contribute from no one to lead us to collapse? If Brunner was right, perhaps it is time to start changing the narrative. Know that most of humanity has realized that we are heading for a very serious situation. How could we develop an alternative narrative? A narrative that will allow us to construct a different future reality. This is what is being talked about in an academic discipline that emerged in the 1960s and is gaining relevance nowadays, a discipline that has been called Futures Studies. This discipline argues that we can indeed build an alternative future through an alternative narrative. But what narrative could we use? I will tell you a personal story. We who have been meditating for many years, 
people who have been meditating for decades and developing different brain rhythms end up having powerful and special intuitions. It seems, according to research, that the brains of regular meditators are in the alpha wave frequency much more often than other people. Alpha waves are waves that appear in creative processes. That is, your brain is at a point where intuitions can be much more creative and much more accurate. And curiously, these intuitions often come to you when you least expect them. But as well as a meditator, I am a social sciences researcher. So in December 2022, I decided to participate in the Earth Charter International Conference, which took place at the United Nations University for Peace in Costa Rica. That conference, at which I was to give a presentation, began with a speech by Michael Bracken, chairman of the Earth Charter International Board. During his speech, Michael Bracken related what had happened to him the first time he was there at the United Nations University for Peace, when a cloud of butterflies suddenly surrounded him and he felt that those insects were trying to tell him something. That same morning, a couple of hours later, I was talking to someone inside the plenary hall when suddenly a butterfly flew in through the window and rested on my hand. That, of course, was quite striking. But even more striking was the fact that the butterfly was of the same species as the butterfly we have on the logo of our main global project, which is the Earth Stories Collection. If you see that the Earth Stories Collection logo, if, well, that butterfly, exactly a member of that species, came on my hand that very morning. This was two hours after Michael Bracken commented on the butterflies. We would be talking here about what Carl Gustav Jung called synchronicities, an unequivocal sign, according to him, that the archetypes of the collective unconscious are operating around you. Well, the next day, during my lecture, while I was speaking to the audience about the need to take action in the face of the possibility of a collapse of all societies, a very powerful intuition suddenly came to me. These are things which can happen to anyone, but they happen more to people who do meditation regularly, as I said. A very powerful intuition came to me which was telling me that the process that the planet Earth is going through is a metamorphosis. That intuition was so powerful that I couldn't help but comment on it to the audience. I said, excuse me, but a very powerful intuition has just come to me and maybe things are not exactly like that in the end. Maybe we are not going towards a collapse exactly, but towards a metamorphosis. Also, if you think about it, for a caterpillar, metamorphosis is still a collapse of its former life. So, the question I would like to ask you is, what if we are not exactly heading towards a collapse of the Earth ecosystems, but towards a planetary metamorphosis in which all species would be involved as elements or cells of the organism of the complex system Earth.
Midnight Sun, the program of those who will be spoken of by future generations. This point would be very difficult to justify academically, but as we pointed out a moment ago when talking about Jerome Brunner's theory, narrative offers us a version of reality, the acceptability of which would be determined not by logic or verifiability, but by convention and narrative necessity. That is, that the story makes sense in its plot and denouement. From this point of view, narrative would operate as an instrument of the mind for the construction of reality, for organizing human experience. This is what Brunner was talking about. Therefore, it would not be convenient to discard as a possibility this intuition that maybe we are undergoing a planetary metamorphosis, because perhaps it could serve as a narrative for the construction of an alternative reality to that of collapse. At least, we would not be feeding the collapse from a collapse narrative. From the metamorphic narrative and from analogical metaphorical thinking, there is no doubt that such a metamorphosis would be a difficult, even dreadful trance, as metamorphosis surely has to be for a caterpillar. It has to leave behind a part of itself, that part of, of itself which it considered its identity. It must necessarily leave that part behind, and that means pain and suffering. That is, if what we are facing is a metamorphosis, the process is not going to be easy, because it would be a metamorphosis of planet Earth, of humanity and all species as cells of the organism Earth. It will be not easy for anyone, but it will not mean the end of civilization, nor the extinction of humanity and many, many other species, but a global planetary transformation. This is what we could understand from a narrative of metamorphosis. Irremediably, the parched cocoon would remain behind. Behind it would remain an important part. Behind it would remain what we were. But the Earth would enter a new unexplored phase, like the butterfly. As I say, we could not justify this academically or scientifically, at least for the moment. Although we don't need to from the narrative necessity. However, we could provide some scientific glimpses that could be in line with this narrative. We could talk about the Gaia theory, and above all, the organic Gaia theory, which affirms that planet Earth is a living organism. These are scientific theories that have been put forward in the scientific world for many years. The organic Gaia theory which we will discuss in a future episode, views the Earth as a living organism and therefore as a living system, and hence with the property of self-organization, which is the property of all complex systems. To this we could add Ilias Prigogine's theory of dissipative structures, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1977. And finally, there are many scientific discoveries in recent years challenging the theories of orthodox science, the mechanistic and materialistic science, whose paradigm is crumbling in the face of the new complex systems science paradigm. I am talking about the discoveries that indicate that consciousness permeates the whole universe, that the universe is not made of matter, but of consciousness. In fact, 
there is already some talk about panpsychism, the theory that everything has consciousness. And among its advocates is last year's 2023 Nobel Prize winner in physics, Sir Roger Penrose. Many scientists are already talking about panpsychism, about a conscious universe. From these positions, it is possible that perhaps this narrative of metamorphosis could one day have some scientific basis. We will be looking at all these developments in future episodes of this program. in education, storytelling, communication or social work, we invite you to discover the Earth Stories Collection. The Earth Stories Collection is a global bank of myths, legends and folk tales capable of transforming the worldview of societies for the development of a more just, peaceful and sustainable civilization. These traditional stories, belonging to cultures all over the world, are free to access and download at theearthstoriescollection.org. The Earth Stories Collection, a global bank of educational resources for the construction of another possible world. We say that perhaps we can adopt a narrative of metamorphosis to understand the process we are entering. The whole planet is entering, all species, together with our Mother Earth, Gaia. And we were saying that the analogical metaphorical thinking that Jerome Brunner mentioned possibly allows us to understand many more things that, from the point of view of reason, we may not yet be able to grasp. If we look at it in this way, in an analogical, metaphorical way, we would have to understand that humanity has perhaps played the role of those hormones in caterpillars which trigger metamorphosis. Maybe we are the hormones of the Earth which are triggering the metamorphosis, but being aware of that implies that now we have to act in a different way. Perhaps we have triggered all this unconsciously, because we have been very unconscious with all the damage we have done to the planet and the rest of the species. And now we must be fully aware of what we are doing. Now it is up to us to act. It is up to us to act so that this metamorphosis really works. Humanity has to set itself in motion and has to collaborate with planet Earth, has to collaborate with the whole, with the total organism which is the Earth, in order for this to end well. And that is what we are trying to do not only from all the social, climate, environmental, social justice movements, through all the NGOs, all the organizations and institutions which are trying to change things, which are trying to mitigate this climate and extinction crisis. And from this program, we have launched a new proposal. Given that there are people on the front line working and taking risks for years with civil disobedience, we have thought that we need people on the second, third, fourth and fifth line. People who might be afraid to stand up to the police, who might be afraid of civil disobedience, 
but who would be willing to collaborate, to do their bit with those things they know how to do, dare to do and can do. This is what we propose in Rainbow Warriors 3.5, the drive of all colors, which we launched on 8th of March, although we are still growing slowly. We are just being born, and we need more people, we need more help. So far, Rainbow Warriors has only launched a collective of people who speak Spanish, but we need to launch the movement in English as well, so that people from many more countries can join, people who have already told us that they want to start this adventure. We hoped to achieve this from September onwards, after a summer camp with young people from all over the world that we want to invite to this adventure. However, with the Spanish-speaking community, Rainbow Warriors 3.5 tribes are already started to be created. Soon we will tell you what tribes are being established we will make a special program to tell you that a peace education tribe has been created, that a dance tribe has been created, and so on. What are tribes? Tribes are affinity groups, the action groups for social transformation that make up the basic structure of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 campaign. In this campaign, we welcome tribes of all kinds, from small groups of friends or family members, to work teams, to groups of people connected by common interests, to associations or collectives working on social justice or sustainability issues, to organizations or institutions. In fact, we have even been asked if a university could be a member, could be a Rainbow Warriors 3.5 tribe. Any group willing to engage in any activity that advances social and ecological justice in our world, be it fighting or mitigating current injustices, or proposing, experimenting and implementing new visions to build truly just and sustain sustainable societies. Any group willing to engage in all of this is welcome to Rainbow Warriors 3.5. It would be good if the tribes are composed of between 2 and 150 people. Also, we could consider other options. Maybe a tribe can be made up just of just one person. If we see that there is no other possibility and that this person is willing to do their bit to change things. And as I say, there can also be institutions, which would mean more than 150 people. If suddenly a university applies to be part of Rainbow Warriors 3.5, then we would certainly welcome them in one way or another. Each tribe is independent and autonomous in itself. However, to be part of Rainbow Warriors 3.5, tribes are required to align their very various goals, methods and action models with the principles and values of the Air Charter. This international document will also be discussed here in the near future. So, please form a tribe on any topic that interests you, any topic that helps us mitigate the climate and extinction crisis, that helps us create a more just society, that helps us create a more sustainable society. You can make tribes of all kinds, even I don't know, blog writers, people who create uh, videos to raise awareness, people who plant trees in places that have uh, burned down, any idea that helps us to build that world that we have to leave as a legacy for future generations. In the credits of this program, we leave you links so that you can find out more. And uh, if you understand the Spanish, 
we will also leave you a link to an interview that Gabriela Ibarra did with me yesterday on Instagram on her Ishakumi channel from Mexico. Do you know the Earth Charter? The Earth Charter is an international declaration of ethical principles for the respect and care of life ecological integrity, social and economic justice, democracy, non-violence and peace. But it is also a worldwide movement which seeks to inspire in all people a new sense of global interdependence and share responsibility for the well-being of the whole human family, the community of life and future generations, thus becoming a vision of hope and a call to action. Learn more about the Earth Charter at earthcharter.org. Earth Charter, turning conscience into action. final stretch of this Midnight Sun program. Today we told you about two recent news stories, about a couple of polls that say that 8 to 9 out of 10 people on our planet are demanding stronger action from governments to mitigate the climate and extinction crisis. And in another news item, they said that 69% of the world's population would be willing to contribute 1% of their income to this climate fight. We have also talked about how narratives from analogical metaphorical thinking allow us to construct reality not only in the present, but also for the future. We have been saying that perhaps the narrative of the collapse which has been very useful and very necessary because we had to tell what was happening in the world, is no longer so useful. On the contrary, from Brunner's theory of the construction of reality through narrative, maybe we have to look for an alternative narrative in order to build an alternative future. All this can be justified and explained through disciplines such as futures studies or depth psychology. And we have finally made a proposal to use the narrative of Earth metamorphosis as an alternative narrative to build a different future. We have offered some lines of research that may, in time, provide support for this narrative, such as the organic Gaia theory, the self-organizing capacity of complex systems and their dissipative structures, and more recent research that points to a universe composed not of matter, but of consciousness. In any case, as we point out here, again and again, we, we will have to take action to mitigate the planetary climate and extinction crisis we have to act now. Finally, we talked about Raymond Warriors 3.5, which is the global campaign that we have launched from this program. This tribe of all colors that we have launched to try to get many, very many, let's see if it's possible that there are many millions of people to do their bit in the construction of a possible future. In achieving that, planetary metamorphosis that will allow us to give a future to the generations coming after us. Not only human generations, but also the generations coming after us of all species. We have to start thinking in terms of us, 
not just us humans, but us all species, the community of life on planet Earth. We have now finished Midnight Sun. Thank you for listening to us this far. And thank you, thanks to Kim Robertson for providing us with that wonderful Celtic Arp tune. Thanks to John Mario Diaz and Radio Chacaruna for giving us the opportunity to put this program on the waves for the whole world. Thanks to Blake Kendall for putting his voice and accompanying us in this adventure. Thanks to Marta Ventura, who is the soul of Midnight Sun, without whom we could not make this program. And just one last call to action. Get involved in the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 tribes and get in touch to be part of this tribe of all colors. Nothing more. May the sun shine for you at midnight. Avoid the social collapse we are heading towards because of the climate and extinction emergency, we are going to need 3.5% of the population to take action. That means we need help. Lots of help. If you have an independent radio station and want to share Midnight Sun's radio programs on it, find out more at midnightsun.com.es slash broadcasting. Midnight Sun the social media hub of the Rainbow Warriors 3.5 Global Campaign. Sol de medianoche.